Greetings and welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. Tonight we have a special video in store. Uh, we're going to have a look at satisfactory benchmarks. This is by request from our friend and subscriber Jimified. Now Jimified's in the market for a GPU in the mid to low tier range. His uh, budget's around $300. So we're going to have a look at the benchmarks and then we are going to go ahead and have a look at the GPU market and see what his best options are. So let's go ahead and get rolling. All right, right off the bat here, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, hanging in there with me as I get this stuff recorded and put out. This is actually my fourth time recording this particular video. I've had a lot of technical issues, and so we've decided to go with a different format where I'm just doing a voiceover in order to save time and finally get the video out. Video out. But rest assured, if you are watching this, I have two more videos in, in the uh, chamber here ready to go. So we should be able to main our, maintain our schedule moving forward. So if you have a look here, the CPU we're working with is the Ryzen 5 5600X. We've got the Dual Tower Thermal Right PA120 CPU cooler, Asus Prime B550M motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte NVMe SSD, and a 1200 watt power supply. Uh, we specifically picked this configuration because this is very similar or almost exactly what Jimified uses and it's ultimately for him to make a decision on what kind of GPU he wants to use. And just so we're all on the same page, uh, we're using a fresh install of Windows for each run on each GPU. I'm using the latest GPU drivers as of, uh, albeit uh, April 5th, but that's when I did the actual benchmarks. Uh, we do have Precision Boost Overdrive enabled, DOCP enabled, and resizable bar. So with that being said, let's go ahead and have a look at the benchmarks. So right off the bat here, we've got the A770 um, limited edition 16 gig model there, uh, 221 FPS, uh, which really isn't that bad. I was pretty pleased with the performance. 78, 78 FPS is the 1% lows. So we have our average throughout our benchmark and then our 1% lows here. Uh, next, we have the A750 uh, LE version. Uh, we got 139 FPS there and a 45 FPS 1% low. Pretty much what I expected from Team Blue. And then as we scroll down here a little bit, you see the two uh, troubled children here, RX 6600 and 6650 XT. Those two GPUs had some serious issues. Let's just put it that way. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it didn't matter what I did or what settings I changed. Um, I even tried multiple motherboards, multiple CPUs. I kept having this issue with hitching and stuttering on the 6600 and the 6650 XT. So I'm not quite sure what the issue is there. Now, mind you, Satisfactory is a pre-release game. So chances are whatever this issue is will be cleared up shortly um, if it isn't already. Next, we move on down to Team Green. We've got the RTX 3060 Ti and 3060 12 gig. And as expected, we had uh, 198 FPS from the 3060 Ti and 172 FPS from the 3060 12 gig. So overall, a good showing from all of the lower end GPUs. Uh, Satisfactory isn't an extremely demanding game, um, but you still want to know what you're getting into, and it sounds like Jimified plays a lot, so hopefully that'll help him decide. Now let's have a look at what's available in the $300 price range. So first and foremost, I always recommend if you're shopping, especially for new GPUs, that you start with PC Part Picker. In fact, you can actually do a complete build out on PC Part Picker and price your PC out. But for today's purposes, for, for this video's purposes, we're just gonna go ahead and, and have a look at video cards. So I have a range of video cards picked out here. We went with the price range of $100 to $350. Now, I know Jimified's, um, his, his budget is really $300, but the reason I went ahead with $350 is because you can get a lot more for that extra $50. You lose a lot of value in general in GPUs when you start moving down into that $300 below range. And then once you get to like $250 and below, it really gets sparse. You're, 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 you're not getting a great value for your buy. 
So right off the top here, you'll see the 6700 XT. I think that's a fantastic buy for 349. Uh, pretty tight race there. Um, if I were to pick between the two, I'd still go with the 6700 XT just because you've got that AMD fine wine syndrome going on there. Uh, I think that that graphics card is going to last you for a long time. The 3060 12GB also will last you a long time. And uh, it comes with some fantastic features, namely uh, the DLSS support you get with NVIDIA is considerably better, you know, in general uh, than FSR. Not necessarily across the board, but in general, that feature might be important to you, especially if you plan on playing uh, at resolutions above 1080p in the future. So something to chew on. Now the stuff you see in this range here, this uh, you know 343, 334, yeah, 6650 XT for 329, not great. 1660 Super is a little old. 5700 XT also getting a little long in the tooth, especially for that price. I'm not sure that I would buy one new at all. Now the 1660 Ti is actually a little bit older than the 1660 Super, but it's definitely more performant. I still wouldn't necessarily pay $300 for one. Uh, RTX 3050 is almost always a ripoff, regardless of where you find it. Uh, that card just has a really high price floor, and I think they've priced it as low as they can. You know, the poor AIBs are probably losing their butts on that card. I just, in general, do not recommend the RGX 3050. It's a waste of time. It's not like you're really gonna do much in the way of ray tracing uh, with an RTX 3050 to begin with. So it's kind of like, well, what's the point? I felt the same way about the RTX 2060 too. Now, if, if 300 is really your hard limit, my recommendation would be to go with this Sapphire Pulse card here, RX 6700. This is the OG 6700 with 10 gigs of uh, VRAM. Fantastic card, 299 shipped. Can't, can't, uh, you can't go wrong. I think that's a fantastic buy. And once again, you're really your best option if you insist on going with a brand new card and you don't want to spend a penny over 300. Now, if you could find a 6650 XT down in this range, I'd say go for it. 259, this Azrock Challenger here is not a terrible buy. Mind you, the Challenger, yeah, I would actually go with the Azrock Phantom Gaming because uh, even though it's not a 6650, it's a regular 6600. The Azrock Challenger is like the most base of base model cards. There's no backplate. It's got a really simple um, heat sink. I mean, it gets the job done. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it doesn't have much in the way of features. So it's definitely not a premium card versus the Venom Gaming down here. Down at the bottom of our price range here for 199, you can get yourself into an RX 6600. This is really the what I would consider the entry level for GPUs in 2023. Uh, I would definitely spring either spring the extra twenty dollars to get the Power Color Fighter. Um, that's going to probably come with a mild, well, may or may not come with a mild overclock. I'm not sure if these uh, readings on the clock speeds are correct. Um, but I like Power Color, they make a, a decent card. Or the Azrock Challenger, you can do for 199. I would stay away from the Gigabyte Eagle. People like the Eagle because it's got the, the three fan design there, but it comes with a really cheap plastic backplate. And I know it's not that important when we're talking about an RX 6600. It's not like the memory's clocked super high, but I really can't stand plastic backplates. I think they're an absolute waste of time. Our used options, uh, first and foremost, we're looking at RX 6600 or 6700 XT models that have been sold recently. This one right off the bat here caught my eye. Six bids, 275 plus 1785 shipping. Fantastic deal. Jimified, if you're in the United States, Hop on eBay. I know some people, they don't want to go use, they're worried about mining cards and this and that and the other thing. I would like to say, as somebody who's bought and sold more cards than I can count over the past 10 years, uh, I've bought many mining cards and I really haven't had an issue with a single one. And generally the miners have caught on. They know to clean and repaste the cards before they go to resell them if they have been uh, abused in any way. But yeah, so you're looking at anywhere between 250 and 300 for the 6700 XT in a used to lightly used situation. If you do shop on eBay and you are worried about people mining, I'll show you on the next page here. I would say go ahead and go with a particular type of profile. I would go with with somebody like this, 509 Brown. He's got 443 transactions. So not a ton, but still plenty. And what I usually do is this, you go open a new tab here. 
we'll have a look at his profile, see sellers, other items. So you see how he doesn't have anything else listed? That's usually a pretty good sign that it's not a mining operation that's selling the card. If we look back here, uh, West Oral Tech, 58 sales. Okay, we'll take a look at his profile. 58's a little light, but um, he does have good feedback. Yes, I'm human. Oh, here we go, see, now this might be somebody who's flipping and or mining. Here we go, Bobcat Miner, 300 helium hotspot. So this guy is probably a mining operation. You may or may not want to buy from him. If you're worried specifically about mining cards, the best way to spot a miner is to go to their store and see what other items they have listed. And if you see a bevy of mid-tier last-gen GPUs listed that all look a little grungy, uh, chances are you're dealing with somebody who runs a, a, a mining operation. So we're gonna move on to the RTX 3060. Here are our sold RTX 3060 models. Here are the 3060 Ti, went for about 325. Pretty good deal, I think, for a 3060 Ti. Once again, only eight gigs of VRAM, uh, but it is, it's a pretty decent piece of silicon. Uh, I've, I like my 3060 Ti. I've gotten good feedback from the uh, family members that have used it. That's parts only, so we can disregard that. So yeah, you're a little over 300 for the 3060 Ti or a little under 300 for the regular 3060. And then lastly, I had a look at Jawa real quick. I don't know if you're familiar with Jawa.gg. This is a place where I buy and sell a lot of computer parts and systems. I highly recommend it. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, go to Jawa.gg and check it out. We've got a couple of pretty good options here. If you wanna go on the really low end, now, I said I would stay away from the 1660 Ti, but for $125, if you really want to stay towards that lower end, you really can't go wrong. Uh, and, and I know we see this 1080 Ti here, but the, the 10 series is getting a little too long in the tooth. I'd be concerned about losing um, driver support here within the next couple of years. Um, but anyway, and then here we go. We've got an OG. RTX 3060, that's $280. A little on the high side, but the nice thing about Jawa is uh, they have a really good protection plan. Uh, they're, you're not dealing with this bureaucracy like you have with eBay. They're buying and selling fees are lower, and you're literally buying from other gamers. So the chances that you're dealing with a mining operation are considerably diminished. So that pretty much sums it up. Once again, uh, if you want to go new, I'd still say RX 6700 is a good bet for you. If you want to go used, you might want to look at the 3060 Ti or 6700 XT. That'll wrap it up for now. Thanks so much for watching and thanks, th thanks for being patient. Once again, if you're watching this video, I have two more scheduled to come out soon, so we're gonna be able to stay on our release schedule. Um, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think, and we'll see you soon.